Rick, you got it. Do you have Brett coming or anybody else? Okay. Well, good morning. I'm not sure who was responsible for the weather today, but you're fired because <laughs> today's terrible. <laughs> it is good to have uh, those of you that survived your trek here to City Hall, uh, despite the weather. And we do have some guests and um, also some internal announcements. So I want to start with uh, our law enforcement officials, um, Chief Martin, uh, Sheriff Krish, and Chief uh, Keith, uh, with information about our upcoming Coffee with a Cop. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning. I was actually kind of hoping that maybe by uh, wearing the summer uniform it would make things get warm, but I called that one wrong. <laughs> so, um, this will be the third year uh, that uh, the Lima Police Department and the Allen County Sheriff's Department will be partnering with Lima Allen County Neighborhoods in partnership to uh, bring about the quarterly Coffee with Cop meetings. Uh, and that's been an initiative that I think has been very, very successful. Uh, and so the next one will actually be uh, Saturday, March 22nd from 10 a.m. until noon at the Shawnee Road McDonald's on uh, 2455 Shawnee Road. Uh, and it, with it being in Shawnee, that also uh, actually then leads me into the next point I'd like to make, and that is that uh, we're extremely happy. Um, this year, Chief Mike Keith has indicated that uh, he and his department would also like to be involved in the uh, initiative. And uh, again, just as a better way of helping to uh, improve communication throughout the county, because crime that happens in Lima doesn't just stay in Lima. Crime that happens in other parts of the uh, Allen County do not just stay outside the city, but it all works together and we have to work together. Uh, and so we were actually very, very pleased that uh, Chief Keith wanted to also participate in this initiative. Uh, and so with that, actually, I will turn it over to Chief Keith. Yes, I want to thank the Lyon Police Department and the Sheriff's Department for including us. Uh, matter of fact, just recently, a lot of our cases that we've investigated, uh, the same perpetrator committed offenses within the city of Lima and the, sheriff and the county. Uh, any time that we can get together and communicate and share that with the uh, residents of the township or the county or the city, it can only benefit us. It never hurts. Sheriff, you have anything? Good morning. Um, they've pretty much summed everything up, but you know, one thing I did, uh, would like to say is, you know, it's just all about the cooperation, working together. You know, when you look at uh, the county, uh, Lima, Allen County, I mean, that's how we have to look at it is just as one. So uh, certainly working together uh, benefits the entire county. Uh, and, you know, of course, everybody's kind of short uh, when it comes to manpower and, uh, you know, like with our drug task force, that's one um, effort. And of course, uh, the coffee with the cop is certainly a great opportunity for people in the community to come out and talk to us and actually get to see kind of firsthand the, the working relationship that we have in, in law enforcement. And again, every one of us that are standing up here um, certainly have the same goal is to make our community as safe as possible. And, and, and these type of efforts is going to make it happen. It's going to be a long term, but I certainly believe that you're, you're going to see a positive result. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, good to have you here. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Kirk Niemeyer, the city engineer, to come up. He's got information on the construction schedule for the rebuild of uh, West and Elizabeth Streets. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, first project that we're kicking off this year is the uh, West and Elizabeth uh, project. And again, this um, um, part of the uh, transportation study that we completed in 2010. This is the second phase um, following the uh, conversion of Elm and Spring Street from one way to two way. And um, the streets will remain as a couplet, one way as they are today, in one way um, uh, in their respective directions. Um, however, we will be uh, making changes as far as the parking goes. 
Um, we will take the two lanes down to one lane. Uh, we have the capacity to do that. And um, <coughs> the uh, contractor is Smith Paving and Excavating out of Norwalk, Ohio. And there are multiple um, subcontractors on this job. This is a this job has a lot of parts and pieces, so it will be um, a lot of coordination, both on the city's part, the contractor's part, um, to uh, make this go as smoothly as possible. Um, contractor did um, well. Let me. Um, project will be basically broken down into four different phases, if you will. Um, we expect to maintain one lane of traffic um, as the work um, proceeds and a contract will work on one half of the street so basically one half of the street will be closed and we're starting with West Street um, shortly after West Street gets underway um, we will be starting Elizabeth Street and working on it half at a time so more or less coming down one half of the street getting everything in order on that half and then once we uh, complete, once they complete, switch over to the other half. So, um, and their goal, original goal, was to start next Monday, or this coming Monday, the 17th, on West Street. West Street will be the first street they start on. Um, but uh, we're waiting on a few things yet. I don't know if that is actually going to um, happen, but um, with the weather. Can we, can we <laughs> Proceed in ice and snow. Uh, we can. First, a uh, couple things on the list are tree removal, trees that are in the way of the new work, um, some demolition. So things like that can take place during um, not so good weather. But um, we're just going to have to wait and see. There's um, if the 17th will will work or not. But uh, my guess it'll probably be probably a week after that. But we have sent out the schedule. Um, the contractor has provided the construction schedule and we have sent that out to um, through downtown Lima so the business owners um, will be getting um, a look at that through email and um, we're going to try a few things um, this is going to be tight working space for all that's going on on the project but we're going to try to do some innovative things to maintain on-street parking for the businesses. Um, we're looking at closing a lane on Market Street to provide um, some parking along the north curb line of uh, Market Street for the duration of the park or for the project forever, however long we need it. Um, we're going to be looking at um, in the more heavily parked areas, probably setting up something where we're um, we're not going to park cars on the new work that we just completed, but we'll be parking cars partially on the sidewalk um, so we can maintain that um, close access to, for the businesses. But it will be tight. Uh, there will be a lot of things going on. So um, we appreciate your patience. And we'll, you know, if there's any problems during the project, which there will be, um, don't hesitate to contact. Um, engineering department here at the city or our on-site inspector will be out there all the time so we hope to make it um, as least disruptive as possible but again it will be disruptive but when it's all said and done um, it will uh, certainly function um, well and um, be pleasing to look at so so the expected uh, end date is August 29th is the completion date, so. So Labor Day. Labor Day. So, in a sense, you know, West Street's going to kick off first in the next couple weeks, and shortly after they get going on that, um, Elizabeth will start up. So, the crews will um, rotate through that, um, but one will, you know, Elizabeth Street will be slightly behind um, a West Street as the as the work progresses so and the total amount of contract is the uh, total amount of the project is I believe 1.3 million and um, that uh, and again that goes from Elm Street up to Wayne Street on West and Elizabeth. Great. Thank you. Thanks for 
should be a, uh, a good project. It's one that we delayed last year because uh, although the engineering was done when we went to bid, the bids came in like 40% over budget. So we uh, did, decided to, uh, and we only had one bid. So there was really no reason to proceed at that point. We didn't have the money. So this time the bids came in. They were within our original estimate. We've got the money to pay for it. And now we'll proceed. Uh, Rick Stolle, the Director of Parks, is here with a couple of uh, announcements. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. We do have a couple of announcements to make, actually three um, uh, for the community. First up, as a reminder uh, that our softball and baseball registration is going on now uh, and will go on until the 28th of this month. So we got um, a little over two weeks, right around two weeks left to get that wrapped up. Again, registration forms went home with the kids at school. They're also available online and available at our office at 900 South Collet. Uh, you do have to fill that out and return it to us uh, with the fees um, again this year. We're, the fees are at $30 where they've been in the last uh, five or, or uh, seven years. So, uh, again, boys and girls. The girls are playing softball. Uh, we have two divisions in each. Uh, so the girls of third and fourth grade, girls fifth and sixth will be playing softball. The, the boys in third and fourth will have their league, and then the boys in fifth and sixth will have their league uh, for baseball. So uh, <coughs> we, we got a, somewhere in the area of... 40 plus teams uh, last year. We look for that to be pretty close to, or maybe a little bit over that number for uh, this coming year. So with that process, um, again, getting the information back to us uh, by the 28th, we'll start putting the kids on teams, getting uniforms ordered. Uh, practice will start in April, and then season actually begins in uh, early May. So uh, and we'll wrap up around the 4th of July. So very important that folks get out and get that information together. Secondly, kind of in line with that, we are in the process of lining up interviews now for our summer employment opportunities uh, with Ball Diamond Crew, with the Parks Maintenance, with the pool, on our playground program. Uh, people have been paying attention and we do have a number of applications in, but if you're still on the fence, uh, you need to get that done pretty doggone quick because we are starting to schedule interviews for those positions uh, here. And it takes us a little bit of time to go through that process, set up, set up the interviews, and um, uh, get everything lined up. But if you're making your plans to get home for college, uh, from college on your spring break, uh, we kind of coordinate those times so that we can, and the, and the high school spring breaks as well. So uh, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, uh, get your information uh, very soon if we haven't already and we'll, we'll call call the folks and uh, start lining up interviews uh, for the end of the month and the first part of April so that process will go on as well uh, as we've done in the past so if you're still thinking about it um, stop thinking and start doing and it's time to get those in uh, finally I uh, want to remind folks of our AEP challenge that's out there and uh, the website that folks can go to is uh, energysavers2014.com, energysavers2014.com. You'll scroll down and you'll see a little icon with Lima on it. It'll say, how do I help? How do I participate? Boom, you go in there and there's information on rebates for uh, Energy Star appliances. There's information on how you can get some money for recycling your old appliances. You can take an uh, online energy assessment from the comfort of your home. Uh, just fill out a few questions. You can actually sign up to have someone come out from AEP to do an audit of your uh, appliances and everything that you have and give you an idea of what you could save. There is a cost involved with that one. Um, then there's some business opportunities as well. All on that website. Uh, again, we're driving this because our goal, the challenge from AEP to us, was go out and get 750 folks that live in the Lima, uh, sit in the city of Lima, to educate them on some of the things that we have, some of the processes we have available, how they can save energy, and how we can help them put money back in their pockets through lower energy cost and some of the rebates that are available. So, uh, we're, we're saying to the Lima community, get involved and uh, 
go to the website, energysavers2014.com, uh, for more information. Uh, go to our website. Uh, you can click on the Energy uh, for Lima uh, logo in there, and you can get more information as well. We're flooding the community with information. We just need the community to step up and go online and make those things happen. So, um, again, all this is to, once we meet our goal, our challenge, uh, AEP is going to help us in assisting with putting in new lights at Simmons Field for use of the local high schools, the uh, Lima Legion and, and of course the Lima Loco. So uh, the field is in dire need of upgrading that antiquated lighting system and we need uh, your support, the Lima community, to help make that happen. 750 people getting involved in any one or more of those programs uh, to, to make that happen. So a lot going on there. So if somebody has a, uh, an older appliance and they want to have uh, have it removed. What do they do? Go online and look under the appliance um, recycling program. Fill out the information. Make the call. AEP will assign a contractor to come out, pick that up, take it out, get you a fill out a little bit of paperwork. You'll get a check for fifty dollars from AEP for so recycling. They, they not only give you a check; they give you the muscle. Yes. To get. You got an appliance in the basement. They will move it you got out. An appliance in the attic. Uh, this is an opportunity to have have that piece of. That's a great point, man. Yes. Picked up and removed. Yes, that's correct. So that that convenience alone alone <laughs> ought to be uh, really understood. And I did, I didn't understand that until we talked about it again yesterday. So it's. Uh, this is a pilot program that AEP is testing throughout the state of Ohio. AEP Ohio. And, and we're, we're one of the communities that was selected to be a part of this program. And, you know, there's going to be some tweaking in it. But honestly, if you go to the website, do a little research, put some money in your pocket with a rebate, put some money in your pocket from Energy Star appliances that you're putting into your, into your home, and that will tell you. Uh, even on the online, uh, the free online um, assessment you do for your home, it asks you a series of questions, the age of your water heater, the age of your furnace, yada, 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 and, and it will actually calculate how much you could save on a, uh, uh, for a year with your, with your energy bill. So it it's truly is a way to not only put some money in your pocket, but also educate you on, on ways to, to conserve energy. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, that's all that we have for today. We hope that uh, folks um, uh, drive carefully and um, also with the nature of this snowfall, uh, after it's done, we want to encourage people to get out and, and uh, uh, shovel their sidewalks because it, it will be, uh, this is a combination of ice and, uh, and snow really does need to be removed in order to allow pedestrians to get, get around town. So. I want to encourage people to do that in a timely way. That's all that we have for today, and we'll break down for interviews. Thank you.